Hi, I'm Scott Wrighton. I serve as Decatur City Manager, and it truly is uh, my pleasure and the pleasure of other, other staff people who participate in these uh, short videos from time to time to bring you information about what's going on with the city. So uh, clearly one of the things that's been in the news a lot about actions by the city of Decatur has to do with an action that the city council took after much heated conversation and deliberation at their last Monday meeting on December the 5th regarding uh, uses of the two small city parks that the city has downtown. Nearly 40 parks in the uh, greater city of Decatur area are managed and run and owned by the Park District of Decatur. So for the most part, the city of Decatur is not in the park business. But we do have two very small parks, both of them located in the Central Business District, one called Central Park and the other recently renamed to Preston Jackson Park. And the reason why the city retains ownership of these parks is because in many respects they're sort of an extension of the downtown development, the, the downtown activities that we try to uh, make happen in the downtown area because it provides space and, and land for these things. So what is it exactly that the city council did on Monday night? Well, they passed an ordinance that establishes a curfew, if you will, that begins every night at 12 midnight and extends until 6 o'clock the following morning. The other thing that they did is they established a, a fairly small fine of $25. They were actually thinking about making it zero because it was clear in the conversations that this isn't about trying to raise money or, or, or charge fines, but we have to have some kind of a fine, otherwise the police don't really have a legal recourse. A lot of the discussion also centered around how the police would actually enforce this. And it was also very clear, and I would, I would endorse this, that the uh, the number of tickets likely to be issued is extremely small. The reason for that is that uh, the police chief reports, and I've observed this myself, that for the most part, when the police ask somebody to move it along or, or to follow whatever other ordinances and rules might be in place about the park, or any other public space for that matter, usually they have a high rate of compliance. People say, oh yeah, okay, I'm happy to do that. Bottom line is this, it is possible to reduce vandalism, reduce the defacing of the park, keep those parks safer, cleaner, uh, and more readily available for festivals and, uh, and uh, fairs and other sorts of celebrations that, that might happen in the park, and continue to do what the city has already been doing, and that is to provide assistance to the homeless. What sort of th sorts of things have been happening? Some of the equipment and the benches uh, uh, have been vandalized. Trash gets upended. People defecate in, in the park. They spray graffiti and swastikas on the sidewalks and on the buildings. Now, our public works department has, is in, that, in those two parks every single day, and they do a fantastic job of cleaning it up and doing landscaping and making those, those parks very attractive. So it adds to the amount of time. It adds to the, to the cost that the taxpayers have to pay every day when we're back in that park dealing with some of the implications of that. Much of that happens in those evening hours. Some of it doesn't. Some of it happens e even before 12 midnight. But by clearing out the park once a day, we believe that we can significantly reduce that. I think it's also important to point out that the city has been very active for a long time in uh, making sure that we're doing everything that was reasonably within the municipality's power to help the, the homeless. Now, we aren't in the business of operating uh, homeless shelters, and, and I, I don't agree that, that, that the park should be a, a homeless shelter. Uh, and that's why, for example, the city more than a year and a half ago received a million and a half dollar grant that we are using to, to put into uh, additional uh, lodging, housing facilities for the emergency displaced or the, or the or homeless or transitional housing people, with those, all those different terms are used, uh, particularly with, uh, with a project that we're working very closely with Dove on, down on John Street, where we're, we've acquired an old nursing home and we're going to be rehabilitating and renovating that exclusively for that purpose. Another project with, um, with the Salvation Army and some other projects to enhance the uh, uh, the availability of, of, of housing for, for the homeless. And I also know that several churches are adding to their inventory, and we're pleased to see that too, which is probably why collectively uh, there is usually space available for the homeless who need shelter at night. So in, in these ways, I, I want to repeat that we can keep the, the parks safe, we can keep them clean, um, and we can also, at the same time, provide a much better option for the homeless with these other sorts of investments that the, um, 
um, that, that the city is, is, is making. So uh, stay tuned, we'll give you an update on this. And, and the, uh, the city council, when they passed this ordinance, provided that it be sunsetted for a year, which simply means that the ordinance will expire in a year, which means we'll be keeping data on this so we can bring that back and, and let the city council make a decision about how they wanna change this ordinance or continue the ordinance based on some good data about what's actually happened in the year ahead. But I'm confident that we can do all those, all those three things at the same time. It doesn't have to be an either or situation where we just sort of lose control of, of the park. Uh, we, can, we can control the park, make sure the park is used for what it's supposed to be used for and help the homeless at the same time. Thanks for tuning into the video. I look forward to bringing you another update next week.